So back here, um, there's a little oil gauge here. There's a little red dot here. And uh, you want the oil level to be right in the middle of the red dot, um, or maybe slightly towards the top of the red dot, but not over the red dot, and not under the red dot. Um, so as long as you can get the meniscus of this fluid to be within that red dot, um, then the oil level is correct. You always have to check this the first time you run it. The next thing is there's pressure gauges on here. So the first pressure gauge here, next to this control box here, is for monitoring the pressure of the tank. So this tank pressure normally runs around 135 PSI uh, down to about 115 PSI. Um, at the high and low ranges, this control box will automatically turn on and shut off the motor um, to maintain the air tank pressure. Then there's an output regulator right here, which allows you to adjust the pressure that goes to the machine. So this should always be set somewhere between 100 PSI um, and 115 PSI. Uh, and that will put out the correct pressure through this hose. This is a fourth inch inner diameter hose that goes up this wall to the other side, down there to a stack of filters. Uh, let's see. But before I go into that, one more thing about this tank is whenever this tank is compressing air, uh, it, it builds up moisture inside the tank. And eventually, there's going to be a bunch of water in this tank. Uh, so at the end of uh, every, every day, when you shut down the air compressor, you're going to have to, um, on the bottom, or basically, release the pressure from the tank, so it's zero PSI. And then on the bottom of the tank, um, there's actually a little screw that allows you to drain water. Um, so it's actually somewhere around here, and it's pretty much hand tight. Uh, so you just unscrew that, and the water will come gushing out, and uh, just have to have a little tray or something to kind of make sure you, you can clean that water up. Uh, but during this tank, tank is important to maintain the capacity of the tank. Too much water in this tank will reduce capacity, which will make this uh, air pump pump harder because as you run more more often, there's less capacity. So over here. The, there's a red little knob here. This turns on and off the machine. So right now it's in the off position. Uh, to turn it on, you just flip the switch to the other side. Um, but when you want to clear the tank, you basically switch it to the off position and just use the air somehow. Um, on the other side, I have a little air gun that basically allows you to just shoot air out of this tank. Uh, that allows the tank to be drained at a very slow and, and controlled rate. Um, so you can see this air gun here has a little pressure regulator here. So you can turn up and down the pressure regulator in order to uh, make the, the air drain faster or slower. Um, this is also useful for blowing uh, debris off your boards as the milling machine uh, rolls. So after you've drained the tank of pressure, then you drain the water. Uh, so make sure all the pressure's out because if you start uh, unscrewing the bottom of the tank and there's still pressure in it, that could cause a lot of water to spray out all over the place and it's not very safe. It's, not safe at all. Um, so just be careful, take care of this pump, because uh, it's essential for running the machine. Okay, so I'm going to turn on the machine right now, but uh, we'll go over to the filter side. So this orange hose running down here goes into uh, a bank of little filters. So the filter, the first filter is a um, five micron air filter. Essentially, it's trying to remove all the particulates that come through the air tank. The next filter is an oil filter. Because it's an oil-based compressor, it'll introduce oils into the air. So the oil filter filters out all the oil to make sure that the oil is making into the machine. The third filter is a desiccant filter. Uh, what it does is it takes the air with our humidity and dries out the air. Uh, so if I bring this up right here, we do have to monitor these filters because they will eventually fill up. So there's a gauge here for um, the filter, uh, the air filter. There's uh, basically an area down here that will collect up the oil uh, that comes in here. And this desk in here right now is pink. Um, and that's not good because when it's pink, that means that um, the desk in inside is used up. So it's got saturated with water in it. Ideally, this desk would be blue. Um, so what we need to do is actually change out this desk. Um, and we shouldn't be using the machine 
uh, for long periods of time if the desk end is expired. Uh, so in the future, we'll actually replace this, desk, this disposable desk end filter here, which lasts about one day, um, with a larger unit like this, where we can actually take out the desk end, put it in a microwave, and get all the moisture out, and then put it back in. So it's a very uh, sustainable process. Um, and then finally over here, we have a little T here that gives air to the gun, uh, their gun, as well as gives air to the machine. Now finally, next to the machine, we have a uh, pressure regulator over here. And uh, this particular one should be set to 85 PSI. Uh, and that basically protects the machine against overpressure um, on the other side. And uh, there's also like a little um, air filter here as well, so that kind of has secondary protection for the machine as well. Um, in the back of this machine, we also, part of the air system is uh, the vacuum. So we have a radiant vacuum hose here and a vacuum table hose here. Um, the other connection is just USB to the computer and power. Uh, then we have, a, down here, this white box over here is the vacuum, uh, dual vacuum unit. So there's actually two vacuum pumps in it. Uh, so one of the vacuum pumps is responsible for maintaining vacuum in the vacuum table, and the other pump is responsible for vacuuming debris from the actual tooling head. Uh, so later on, we'll see in the video that the tooling head actually goes down and sucks up debris as this machine is drilling and drilling. Let's go into procedures of how to turn this on. So the first thing we need to do, um, as I mentioned earlier, is to check the oil in the, the air compressor, uh, and then if everything looks good, um, turn on the air compressor. And then make sure that all the pressures are correct on, on that side as well as the machine. So it's going to get a little bit noisy here. Uh, so I'm going to turn on the compressor. Okay, so the compressor has finished pumping. And let's check the gauges. So this gauge here, um, telling us the tank's pressure, is a little bit above 125 psi, which is good. This regulator here is outputting around 110, maybe 105 PSI. Um, so that's good. So that's how much pressure we want going through this line. And then let's check the final gauge in the back of this machine. So, so finally, we look at this gauge here. And this gauge is showing about 187-ish PSI, which is fine. Uh, so that's exactly what we want for this machine.